Out to Smith. Smith's got their man outside him. It's oh! Coates. He got that try. He got that try. Gives it to Coates. He's got a bit of work to do. He leaps in the air. Does he stay in and get the ball down? Oh, the yes, head. he does. Oh, my God, he's got it. Yes, he does. That is wow. one of the most spectacular tries we've seen in rugby league. Welcome to Turn It Up. And we've got Josh Morris, who, by the sound of it, working for 2GB, you have a bet in that game? <laughs> <laughs> what a no, try. I think it's just getting used to, to calling, getting the voice stronger. And I've, you know, I've obviously just started out on it, so uh, it's something that I need to work on. But, yeah, have a bit of a laugh at it now. Love him listening back to it. Yeah, love it, mate. There's a good, good bunch of blokes there and don't take themselves too seriously, just like you boys. And when you get to get paid to do something that you loved and now you get to talk about it, it doesn't feel like work. We saw Bradman Best and Jackson Hastings hit the sponsors the other night up at, uh, in Newcastle. Was it you or your brother? No, that was, that Brett. was Brett. That was Brett. Where, he, was it, where was it at? That was at Old Trafford. Um, in he went the, down the hill. World yeah. Cup final and 30. he actually took a brick oh, off, yeah. off its mortar. He, he hit it that hard that there, he lifted up a row of bricks. Here he so, goes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look, yeah. Looks like you. <laughs> a little bit. So what happened? He hit, he hit the fence that hard. So there was there was the fence, but there was also like a, a kind of step up, and there were bricks, and it was covered oh. by like just like a grass mat, and he's hit that as well, and lifted the bricks off the mortar. He hit it that hard. <laughs> and what injury did he get? Just a bruised back. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Pretty tough on BMOS. Night out at Manchester to fix that. He yeah. is, isn't he? Yeah. Like for a quite like yeah. those unassuming blokes. I've seen him do some tough things. There's that origin game where he carried yep. a shoulder for a while and then like you said, just in that situation. What is it about those sort of blokes? They get this sort of the, they got that steely toughness about Yeah, I don't know. I, I think you just love playing with blokes like that and you knew what you're gonna get every week with Brett. Um, the way he prepared, the way he went about his work and he he's transferred transferred that over to coaching now but um, yeah he was pretty quiet compared to myself I'm I'm probably the one who's a bit more out there but one thing with Brett is he doesn't waste his words he gets across his message as quick as he can and it's blunt and it's direct but it's well received by people so uh, he definitely has that presence about him and I can see why he's opted for the coaching uh, you know future path because you know he was always a student of the game he'd always sit back and take in things and then, you know, speak when he had to speak. But it was always a, a clear, concise message and it was straight to the point. What about growing up? Your father obviously played in, played the game at the highest level. Um, your brother, Brett, he's your twin brother. What was it like growing up with a twin brother, loving the game of rugby league? Well, I was the best. You had a best mate. So um, you always had someone to, to play footy against. Uh, that was probably the best thing. In the know. hallway or it, was there it a was, front yard? Where was it? It was literally field? everywhere. It was a front yard, it was a backyard. When when it got dark, it was the hallway, it was a lounge room. We used to have this um, thing that you could put a balloon inside like a, a fabric and it turned into a footy and we'd, we'd have that in the lounge room so we didn't break anything. Like we are just <laughs> literally knee footy, you know, grass burns, like carpet burns, everything. Like we just so obsessed with footy. and. Um, I guess growing up, we, we just thought that we wanted to be footy players. There wasn't a, any other option. When someone asked what we wanted to do, it was, we want to play footy. What, what about the game now? We talk about teams breaking down defences and we want to talk about how we'd see ourselves attacking now, breaking down defences. I think I want, to, uh, I want to show a clip of the Knights playing the Warriors. This is sort of the, the template where if I was playing now, I'd be encouraging my players to play where... You get to around the middle of the field, change direction, and then attack around that post coming back, around where the half or the back row are defends. Because teams defend so well at the ball, mm. but the longer you go to one side, look how big the gaps are. So this is something that I'd be looking to do, get in the middle of the field and change in direction and playing structured play coming back. Yeah, I think there's always that that half is always going to be a target because they are the smaller. These days the back rowers and the centres are pretty much built the same. So you've got that half and it's about trying to get that separation between the four men and the three men or the three men and the two men. And the way you can do that is by bringing players back on the inside and making sure that 
they're be if they're being lazy, well, then that space grows. But I, I guess you also have to take fatigue into it as well. You've got to try and make those middles work harder. And as, as that game goes on, those spaces do get bigger. Um, particularly for myself, I like to, to um, lead into the holes and, and try and drag in, uh, you know, that centre for my fullback out so the back. So you, you would be leading in between where the half and the centre? Yeah, defense. I would do yeah. that normally. Or, um, yeah, I would get an early ball off a quick play of the ball. I never really wanted the ball. If, if obviously, a slow play of the ball, you're not going to want the ball. But I, I found that, you know, I embraced the contact. I wanted to, to, you know, be hitting the line as hard as I can and trying to make them stop me um, rather than, you know, just getting the ball early all the time and just coming up with it. Because sometimes you can get the ball early and you have three blokes in front of you and <laughs> do your all, best. They're all slow. You're like, thanks they're for that. that. Yeah, that's, where, that's where our careers differed, embracing the contact. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the pressure always comes from the inside, so that's where, where you're getting back across. Okay. There's a lot of space on the other side. I want to talk about the other side of the game, the defensive side of the game, and, and playing against yourself. You, you were one of the, the best defensive centres that I came up against. What sort of principles did you put in place before you made the tackle to get up and and make yourself a nuisance in the attacking line? Well, I guess that was that was something that I always uh, focused on coming through the grades as well. I mean, every bloke that plays first grade can attack. Yeah. Like, but you've got to be a good defender. You've got to go out there with the confidence knowing that you can defend. So that was something that I always prided myself on. And as a centre, you can be an attacker. You know, you can have the silky hands. You can run and that, but as a defender, you've got to make crucial decisions out there. Well, it's the hardest spot to defend. Yeah. So, the reaction's got to be perfect. So you've got to do a lot of homework, you've got to prepare well, but the, the one thing that I was always good at was communication. Uh, and when you're tired, that communication goes. So that was one thing that I always made sure that I was a good communicator on the field, to my halfback, to, to my winger, mm. and building that trust and that relationship. But you'd also... Um, you try and t tinker with the the attack and try and disrupt them. I would I would try and disrupt you if, if I was playing you by the first time, just coming out as hard as I could and try and hit hit you. So you'd go, oh, all right, next time Take we're going to play a little bit deeper, deeper here. Yeah. And then I'd go to do that, but then I'd slow back up yeah. and then you'd pass the ball early. So I would try and do little things, but I would also at the same time not give away or give my tells. I'd always try and remain as square as I could mm. and it would be up to you to make the right decision rather than me giving you that decision. I, I always thought it was a competition between myself and the centre. It, we played mind games with each other. You put on plays and little variations and, and that disruption would certainly come into it. What about centres these days? Who's the best centres in the game? Um, I, I really like Val Holmes. I really like what he does. Um, Bradman Best, I think he's great. Stephen Crichton. I mean, Why Val, mate? Why do you like him? Oh, I like the way he's transitioned from, from the wing to the centre. And like I was saying, he, lo he doesn't mind that contact as well, coming from the wing, um, you know, doing those outside back carries. He's transferred that to the centre role where he likes to punch those hard lines. And um, you know, he scored plenty of tries or poked his nose through and been able to get the ball to his winger to set up tries like that way. Uh, I think Stephen Crichton is an amazing athlete at centre as well. Um, and Bradman Best... You know, he really surprised me in Origin last year. Uh, he, he was outstanding. And, yeah, and I really like watching the way he plays as well. And um, Yeah, I, I like those big, powerful centres. I feel like when I watch the game now, I feel like centres are being told how to play. Like, you've had some really good coaches like Trent Robinson, uh, Des Hasler. You know, what, what would their instructions be to centres? Um, oh, I... They're probably, Des, Des was defensive minded obviously, so it was all about that communication, making sure you stay square uh, and not, not giving them the, the, the option when, it, when attacking. Um, Robbo was a little bit different, he had a bit different philosophy um, and their defensive system was a little bit different, whereas Des's were a lot of the time you were jamming in, Robbo's was kind of get up, stay square, hold, and then try and do everything together and yeah. wait for your inside pressure to come. Mm. Um, but I really... They were two dif differing styles of coaches, but I really enjoyed being coached by both of them. Um, and I think Robbo probably paid me one of my ultimate compliments was when I got to the Roosters, he said that whenever they played um, the Dogs and me and Brett were on the same side, they didn't even bother having any attack wow. on that side. They would go to the left side because he knew that... 
they, they wouldn't get much joy on that side. And it says a lot about communication, though, doesn't it? It does, <laughs> and I say that... Well, in, twins... In the front, well, that's what twins I Twins mean. have got the, the intuition. Well, they've got Especially that when plus there's, the voice. So. And there's one evil twin, always. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I say that to most young centres these days. Yeah, I'm, I'm the one that was always in trouble, I guess. But the, the communication is the most important yeah. aspect, and, and it's that trust. You've got to build that trust. And uh, I was lucky that I had Brad outside me, but I had a, a number of good wingers, Daniel Tupo as well, and... Um, Harbs, Trent Hogginson was my Harb at, at the Dogs for a long time and I knew that you know they would direct as much traffic as they could but he would always aim up, he'd always get in front and that gave me confidence to then be able to go and do yep. what I needed to do as well. So it is about you know building that trust as a unit as well. Well, let's get to a break. After the break, we're going to talk to Josh about Origin. Welcome back. Turn it up. Josh Morris, Origin. New South Wales, who are you picking in the centres? Uh, probably Bradman Best and Stephen Crichton. I really liked what um, he did in his Origin debut, and Stephen Bradman. Crichton, yeah, Bradman, and and Stephen has obviously been one of the premier centres for a while. So I'd probably have them as my centres. What is it you like about Bradman? Um, I, I like he's powerful. He, you know, he's a bit shorter in terms of his height, but he's powerful. He looks like he's hard. Hard to tackle, but he also showed that he's, he's got that skill, that silky hands, that catch mm -hmm. pass as well. And the Fox scored. Yeah, yeah, so I really... And that was something that I didn't know he had until he pulled it out on the on the big stage. So uh, he really impressed me with that. And um, I think if Newcastle can you know, start the season well and he's playing good football, well then he certainly... He'll be thereabouts. So that's the other question around Origin. Like, he hasn't shown really that much this year, hasn't he? Like Bradman, he hasn't been... Well, Newcastle haven't been great, yeah. but, you know, do you just think, well, you did it last time, I'll go with you again? You feel like Origin's that sort of stage? Oh, yes and no. I think you've still got to earn your Origin jumper every time you, you go out and play Origin, but I just think the debut that he had, he, he probably deserves that, that chance again. Yeah. Talking about earning Origin, your Origin career, the big moment I remember is when you were busted, hurt the knee. And you come on a tackle, Greg? You got off, up. Off the field. And then Greg, Greg was, was like, where did too. you come from? <laughs> <laughs> 20 minutes here, here it is here. You've Ran done your knee. Ran me back on. You're on PCL, the sideline. Yeah, I did my PCL. But at, at that stage, it, they suspected that I'd done uh, my ACL. But you, <laughs> Billy and had seen me go off, and yeah. it was him and, him and Cameron screaming to get... The ball to no, re no replacement card. <laughs> and that's, then, a, that's a foul. How what, far offside are you? What was going through <laughs> your head? I ran back on side. What was going through your head? <laughs> You're looking at the play. What what made you get up? Uh, well, it's just origin. You just yeah. do you do what you got to do. You, you just override that pain and um, you just do it for for your teammates. And at that stage, Brett had. A broken shoulder, so it was about trying to. And he was playing. Trying to make the tackle instead of him making it. So well, it was about, game, about looking after him a, a little play. bit as well. Was, he saved a try at the end he, of the he game. Sends, he was under yeah. the. He was under the tackle. And if you watch that tackle, win, um, to win the game, Bo Scott comes and absolutely hammers him. He said that the tackle wasn't the, yeah. the worst part. It was when the boys came in and absolutely mm. hammered him. So I, I still remember we won that game, and uh, me and Brett sat in the hotel room and the noises that we are making because we were in pain. <laughs> wow. We didn't sleep. We had 15 minutes sleep, I think, and then got on the bus the next morning. What, what about Origin? What, what, what's the difference to you in, a, in an NRL game compared to an Origin? Well, I, I think, you know, self built from the moment the whistle kicks off, that there's no softening up period. Like in, in a game, finals footy or something like that, you'll have the 10 or 15 minutes and then th it'll settle into a, a bit of an arm wrestle. With Origin, it's 40 minutes, you go as hard as you can. Every contest is a battle and you want to win it. And then you have your rest, you go back out and you do it again. And that's why not everyone can be an Origin player or play it because it takes a certain individual. And, um, you know, we talk about this player's an Origin player and it's because of that you know, those traits, when when it gets tough, they just, you know, are, are able to shut out the head noise or whatever it may be and just continue to keep producing. What about, we, we just watched a, a clip there of you and Greg Inglis. You come up against Greg Inglis. Now, centres, you're man on man a lot of the time. Uh, Greg Inglis is probably one of the greatest players that I've ever played alongside. What's it like preparing for a game against Greg? Yeah, I've spoken about this before and... Um, I had to do like a lot of work in the gym to get myself up to the level of strength that GI was. I remember he threw me around one day <coughs> when we were doing kind of like a little wrestling session when I was on a tour and, and he started throwing me around. I was like, 
Was this like, in a nightclub? <laughs> 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 but uh, after that, I was like, you know what, I've got to get myself stronger. So I really prided myself on, on getting as strong as I could. And I'd do some weird things in the gym and they'd be like, well, what are you doing this for? And I was like, well, this is what GI weighs. And so he, yeah, right. if, it, I can, was, if I can do this. That and, was the inspiration. Yeah, to, to, uh, mate, he, they, uh, I caught up with him in Vegas and we ended up having a few beers and talking about Origin. Throw him around? Uh, no, nah, I didn't throw him around. <laughs> but, uh, you know, he was one of the reasons I was probably, you know, such a good yeah. player because I had to wow. shape yeah. up against him and... Set the bar. And I really liked that challenge. I really liked knowing the fact that if we... If I could do my job well enough on him that we, we'd go a mm. long way to winning the game. And, um, you know, I had a bit of a laugh with him. I said, if GI wasn't there, I probably would have played 30 or 40 tests for Australia. But, you know, he's going to go down as... One of the best players to ever yeah, lace yeah, up the boot absolutely. in the centre. So I was glad I got to share a lot of battles with him. What about your brother? You, you said a couple of funny yarns on the field during the break. Tell us about that. Yeah, I was, I was just saying nothing ever seemed to really rattle Brett or, or trouble him. And um, he didn't give too much away. But there was one day where we were playing the Dragons when he was at the Bulldogs. And I passed him the ball. And it lined wide open, all he had to do was catch it and put it down. And I've started walking away thinking that we're going to go to the goal kick and he's run past me. <laughs> he's just muttering swear words. I looked at him, I go, what's the matter? He goes, I just dropped it. <laughs> and for 20 minutes, he like he was rattled. He looked like he was just zoned out. Himself. Like, yeah, and just shaking his head. And that was one of the only times I, was, I saw him rattled. But uh, it was so funny that we were able to... You know, have a laugh at each other on the field. Most of the time he's laughing at me because I'd do something wrong. But um, that was kind of one thing that we always did. We always played the game in the same way, um, no matter what the score was, whether we were up or down. We always competed no matter what. And, but we always were able to have a, have a laugh and have a joke. And I think that's why the fans really liked us and still talk to us. Obviously, the, the, the fake fight that we had still gets played quite a bit and people just love it, so... Um, you yeah. broke the drought in 2014 with Origin, been in Queensland. What was that like? Yeah, that was, um, you know, pretty special. Obviously, um, the Queensland team, they'll go down as, you know, the, the best ever. And out of that team, you know, there's going to be a lot of blokes that are probably either going to be immortals or Hall mm. of Famers. And in that particular game there, that was the 100th game up at Suncorp. They'd retired Arthur Beetson's jersey we knew that we had to go up there and get one win up there. And that was probably the one of the toughest games of football uh, I've ever had to play. And, um, you know, after that game, walking off knowing that we'd won that game and then had a chance to wrap it up in Sydney. Because we were so close. There were so many games where we would play Queensland mm. and it would be a 2-1 series, but there'd be a game decided by a field goal. And English, you, you don't. Slater, <laughs> Thurston, Smith. Cronk, yes. they'd always pull something out. I'll yeah. go back to that tackle because I was a trainer and I remember standing behind the line and you had got the ball, I think you got a penalty at the death to come and win that game in 2014. And that last tackle, there were like eight players under the ball. Literally, I forget, mm. uh, Will, Will Chambers maybe might have been over there or... And there was, a, there was like, you know, the whole, the whole team were pretty much there to stop. That's what it actually took at the start of the series. They all sat around and they said, we just need to do whatever we have to do. And that was pretty much how they how they beat you. Like just because there wasn't the most talented team by no means, but they just were dedicated to just doing whatever it took for that series, and it was incredible. Yeah, and it's ten years. So ten years. Yeah, it's flown. Um, I think we're actually going to catch up during the Origin series and uh, talk about that and uh, re mm. relive some of those memories. So um, yeah, it's pretty cool. I remember Ryan Hoffman. My job was to run on and try to get the back rows back, and Hoffy. Someone who will just you know do whatever it takes. Mm. He actually changed colour over the over the entirety of the game, from white, from white to grey. He was like, by the end of it, he was that crook looking. I thought, I've nearly killed this bloke. <laughs> Get back here, off he's go. Oh. Just player. do whatever you said he would. He was an amazing character. <laughs> oh mate, thanks for your time today. That was so good. And Pleasure. you'll hear Josh Morris on 2GB, continuous call team yep. on Fridays. Friday nights, Saturday nights. Is that with Piggy? Hanging out with Piggy? Yeah, Piggy on Friday nights, Jamie Howard on Saturdays. So. Beautiful. This year, NRL on 9 is your one-stop shop for all footy. That's right, Freddie. Not about the highlights. Action. Seven days a week. Billy and Gus podcast. Get that on your drive on the way home. Immortal behaviour. Grab a seat on the couch for that. And, of course, my favourite, Freddie and the Young. The best footy brains, the biggest games. Don't trust the algorithm, subscribe to NRL on 9 and get all your entertainment there.